So this first example of CO track to test, this is example eight of uh, chapter 12. And for this example, you are given CO track to test results. And then you're asked to first to determine these two strength parameters, phi and phi prime. And also I added one more question here is to determine the failure plane inclination angle theta here. And to determine these, first let's look at these two strength parameters, phi and phi prime. So to determine these uh, two parameters, you first need to find out what are the principal stresses in this triaxial test at failure. So we have, this is, central, this is saturated descent actually. So that's why the C and C prime is zero. And this all around pressure, this is basically that confining pressure. So this tells you that confining pressure, which is also the minor principal stress, sigma three is 105. And then the drainage was prevented when you apply that axial stress, this basically tells you this is undrained condition. So that's why I said this is a CU triaxial test, consolidated undrained test. And the specimen failed when the deviator stress reached 70 kPa. And this deviator stress is what we call delta sigma D at failure, delta sigma DF. And the pore water pressure at failure, that's delta U D at failure. So when you read this problem statement, you need to link all these known quantities to what we discussed in class. So these are basically sigma three, delta sigma DF and delta U DF. So that's what's given. So then let's find out all the principal stress values and then we can calculate these strength parameters. So first we said that this sigma three is given. So that's 105 kPa, so kilonewton per meter square. And we said delta sigma DF is 70 kPa and delta UDF the pore water pressure at failure, 50. So that's what we get from that problem statement. And then for these principal stress values, let's first calculate um, sigma three prime. So this is the effective minor principal stress. So that's total minus pore water pressure. And total is 105 minus 50, so that's 55. So this is the basic effective minor principal stress. And then for the major principal stress, the total version. So the sigma one is sigma three plus the deviator stress at failure. So that's 105 plus 70, 175. And then the effective major principal stress it's the total minus the pore pressure. 175 minus the pore pressure is 50, so 125. And once we have all these principal stress values, the rest are basically just plugging that equation. And I already showed how do you obtain these two equations. You make use of these two right triangles. So that's how you can get that equation 12.36 and 12.37. So we can just plug in these two equations. So for part A, we're looking for phi. We're going to use equation 12.36. So this total stress or if undrained friction angle, so we call phi is sine inverse, sigma one minus sigma three over sigma one plus sigma three. And if you substitute these total stress values, 175 and 105, and this is, so sine inverse, 175 minus 105 over 175 plus 105. And this is 14.5 degrees.
So that's the total stress friction angle or called unjoined friction angle. And then for part B, phi prime. In this one, we're going to use equation 12.37. And for phi prime, it's sine inverse the effective stress version. And we have calculated these two values as well. So we can substitute these two values. So that's 125 minus 55 over 125 plus 55. And this angle is 22.9. And then the last part, part C, the uh, angle of the failure plane. So this angle of failure plane, we define it with respect to the major principle stress plane, which is the horizontal plane. So this theta. And this theta angle is 45 plus phi prime over two. As we just mentioned, this is the effective stress angle. So that's what controls the failure in the specimen. So you want to plug in the correct friction angle, in this case, phi prime. So that's 45 plus 22.9 over two. And the failure plane theta 56.4 degrees. So that's the CU Traxel test example. And in solving this example, so just like other types of problems for Traxel test, the key really is to correctly identify all these principal stress values. So if you can find the principal stress values in the Traxel test, and the rest are actually pretty simple. Okay. So if you got sigma one, sigma three correct, then you can calculate different trans parameters.